So today we're going to be reacting to the latest UK university rankings. So this video is going to be very helpful for those that are about to apply to university or those that have some offers. Now I graduated some time ago from university, but having worked in investment banks, big tech companies and accounting firms, I'll not only be reacting to the latest university rankings, but also sharing my experiences of knowing where people have ended up, the types of personalities that I've seen attend those universities and the stories and experiences that different people have shared about their times at the university. So without further ado, let's get started with the rankings. Now starting at the top of the rankings, we've got University of Oxford, University of Cambridge, and to be honest, that's no surprise. In my opinion, they should just be given joint first place and allow someone else to enter the top 10. No one is gonna be applying to either of those universities based on their rankings alone. And it's not even considered most of the time by the prospective students. Now where I've seen people from Oxbridge mostly end up is in a lot of consulting and legal roles. In fact, some legal roles out there that I've seen specify that they're only looking for Oxbridge educated graduates. I have seen some work in banking, but a lot of the time they're not in heavy quantitative roles. A lot of the time they're based in sales roles where there's a lot more negotiation and contact with external people rather than working on models or mathematical formulas. Let's just have a look to see if there's any differences in the breakdown of the scores. So the first thing you'll see is the student satisfaction score. University of Oxford and Cambridge don't actually give out surveys for the students to fill in, hence they don't actually have a ranking there. But the 2023 UK University Rankings student satisfaction scores are going to be very important for people applying to university this year. Because if you think about it, the scores are going to be based on how the universities adapted and reacted to the pandemic and did the university give the facilities and adequate support that students needed during the time of lockdown and when they most needed it. Now moving across the breakdown of the rankings even more, we can see that research quality and research intensity both are very high for Oxford and Cambridge and it's easy to understand why top professors and PhD students want to be studying at Oxbridge universities because a lot of the professors and guidance that they'll get will be from internationally awarded professors, many of which will have won a lot of awards including Nobel Prizes and so you're going to be taught and led and instructed by the best people in the world. Let's see if anything else stands out and wow, facilities spend at University of Oxford, that's super low. now. I don't know why that is, I thought University of Oxford with it being such a rich university with a large endowment, they would have spent a lot of money on the facilities. But if you know why that score is really low then put that in the comment section below because that is standing out and I think that's going to be the lowest in the whole of the top 10 if not top 15. That is very surprising. Moving to number 3, we've got LSE, top uni, don't think anyone's going to disagree with that ranking and if you had to guess where they'd end up I'm pretty sure you'd guess right and that is investment banking. Now these people usually are clued up from finance from the get-go. They don't need a lot of training. A lot of them have that self-starter attitude and a lot of the teams that I've worked on have usually had an LSE grad working on them alongside me or before I started they had an LSE grad on the team and it shows the demand for LSE graduates in investment banking. But one thing about LSE is I feel like it's a super strict uni. If you're one of those people who get the top grades but you also like to party hard, I'd probably say LSE isn't going to be the university for you. Now one thing that actually stands out from the LSE grads after graduation when I've worked in investment banking is I often see them with postgraduate qualifications. So that could be an ACA, CFA, FRM, but whatever the qualification is, it's clear that LSE grads don't mind putting in extra work after they finish university. It doesn't matter in terms of them having some free time now, they don't care about that. They still want to work hard after they graduate and carry on doing qualifications. Now one of the negatives about LSE that I'd probably point out is that it's obviously going to be a very expensive location to be based in, especially when it comes to the living costs. However, that is often balanced by the fact it's based in central London and is a great networking opportunity for all graduates to get into the field and companies that they want to. You'll often find a lot of the large LSE societies will be sponsored by large companies from BlackRock, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, McKinsey, all of those companies want to get the name out there and attract the LSE grads so they're heavily involved in networking scene, attending a lot of LSE events and giving them a lot of sponsorship and networking opportunities as well. Moving to see if anything broken down on the scores stands out for LSE. Very high graduate prospects outcome, higher than Oxbridge. And I'm not surprised at that. A lot of the people that go to LSE, like I said at the beginning, already know 
where they want to end up. So as soon as they graduate, they've either already secured a graduate position or know 100% what kind of industry and what kind of role they want to work on. And like I said, they're in high demand already. Moving to number four, we got University of St. Andrews. And I can imagine that a lot of the people that are at the top level students based in Scotland, but don't want to leave Scotland, will probably be applying to University of St. Andrews. And that's probably one of the reasons why it has such a high entry standard just because of the competition and you can see it's higher than Oxbridge it's higher than LSE and if I had to guess that would probably be the reason why now I don't actually know anyone that graduated from LSE so I can't say anything for sure in terms of the personalities that I've seen but it's comfortably ranked in the top five and it was there last year as well so you can see the quality of that university one thing I know about the university though is that it's based in a very pretty location and so that's definitely going to improve your mental health when it comes to all that studying and revision and you can see the student satisfaction score is very very high in fact I wouldn't be surprised if that's the highest in all of the rankings for University of St Andrews and that by itself is a good enough reason for it to have fourth place. Moving to number five Imperial College great location great job prospects and again, a lot of the people just like who go to LSE already know what kind of company, what kind of firm, what kind of industry they want to be working in. It's the same with Imperial. A lot of the people want to be working at the cutting edge of technology. And in some of the world rankings, when they focus on STEM subjects, Imperial is only ranked second in the world to MIT. So it shows you the quality of the university. Looking at the facility spend for Imperial College, that's pretty low, but thinking about how much time these guys will have in terms of workload and in terms of spending their free time on the facilities, I doubt there's gonna be a lot of free time for the students at Imperial College. Looking at the degree completion, that's very, very high. It's probably the highest so far we've got. And to be honest, I'm, again, it's no surprise that Imperial College will have very, very high graduate prospects. If you think about it, the future of every industry is in tech. And if you want to have the best tech graduates, you're going to go to Imperial. And so if you go to Imperial, get the grades, you're going to be in higher demand for getting any job that you probably want. Just outside the top five, you've got Durham University. Now, don't give me any hate for this. I applied to Durham University and I happily got an offer from them. But I sort of see Durham University as being an Oxbridge light. They sort of want to mirror that Oxbridge collegiate system but they also don't have that collegiate system when you think about it. It's essentially just a uni rather than the university broken up into different colleges. Now, the thing is, when you go to Durham University, you've got really, really good courses. A lot of people I've seen end up working in banking, the legal field. I haven't seen anyone in big tech work for them, so I don't have any comments to make about their STEM subjects. But as one of the oldest unis in the country, great reputation, always well respected by employees and is comfortably in the top 10. I'm sure it's been in the top 10 for a very, very long time. Number seven, Loughborough University was seventh last year. Whenever I hear of Loughborough University, I immediately think of sports. One of my friends from university, he was a big American football player, in fact, played at the national level. And when he chose his postgrad qualification, he chose Loughborough University. And I'm pretty sure the American football and powerlifting program that they have at the university was one of the big draws for him to attend Loughborough University. In fact, the Commonwealth Games just finished and they showed a stat where if Loughborough University made up of students and alumni students entered the competition, they would have finished in the top 10, showing the quality at the elite level within the sports caliber of the students. But that's not taking anything away from its academic side. It's been in the top 10 for several years now and employers recognize this. The fact they've got a great and elite sport level program is just a bonus for any people that are interested in sports. University of Bath, this is an interesting uni for me because I think nationally a lot of people do rate it, especially for their economics and maths. And again, they actually do have a great sports program as well, but I'm not sure how well University of Bath is ranked at the international level or in terms of the reputation for international students. If you're an international student watching this, then put it in the comment section below if you've heard of University of Bath, considered it for one of your choices and what your opinion is on the university as a whole. Moving to the end of the top 10, we've got UCL, top uni. One of the things which is probably gonna make me laugh a little bit is that globally, they're ranked within the top 10 and UCL is super proud of that ranking. They've got it in all the prospectuses. They've got it all around banners across the whole of the campus, but it would be weird if globally they're ranked in the top 10, but they somehow don't make it within the top 10 in their own country. But that being said, I don't think UCL will ever drop out of the top 10 within the UK university rankings. The best thing about UCL I'd say is within London, you've got a couple of really good unis. So you've got LSE, you've got UCL, you've got Kings, 
uh, you've got Imperial as well. And whilst LSE will be on one side in terms of the types of courses they'll offer, and Imperial will be on the other in terms of the types of courses that they offer, UCL and Kings to an extent will be based around the middle. And so if you attend UCL, you'll have a little more holistic experience and be surrounded by a lot more different people. So it's a really good mixture of the types of people that you'll find when you attend university. UCL also has a lot of people in banking in really good positions. The one thing that I've seen in common in all UCL graduates is that they work really hard, but they party really hard as well. Now moving to number 10, we've got Warwick University. Probably put this in the same category of UCL, great people, great job prospects when you attend there. But I'd probably always have UCL above Warwick in terms of the rankings, and that's purely down to the location aspect. I'd rather be attending somewhere based in central London rather than attend a campus-based uni, which is based sort of in the middle of nowhere. But yeah, you go to Warwick, you're gonna have a really good job prospects for sure. Lancaster University, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know anything about this university. It's one of those universities which you can see was number 11 last year. It seems to stay within the top 15 and there must be a reason for it, but if anyone has attended Lancaster University, has gone there, put them in the comment section below why this is such a great university because I'm really, really curious about this university for sure. Edinburgh, Southampton, Birmingham, good unis, no comments here. I think that's decent positions for them. Uh, the only thing I'd probably say about these universities, or well, most universities, is make sure you understand the location that you'll be based in for those next three years. If you take these as examples, all different types of locations. So Edinburgh, very picturesque city, Southampton, a coastal town, Birmingham, slap bang in the middle of a busy city center. So whatever one you prefer, make sure you choose that based on where you think you'll be comfortable studying for the next three years. University of Bristol, 15th this year, 17th last year, surprising it was that low last year, but really, really strong traditional uni, Russell Group uni, but I'd also point out that Bristol Uni has a very high influence of private school students. It's actually been in trouble by the government for taking in too many students in the past. So that's one thing you want to consider when thinking about attending Bristol University, that you're going to be surrounded by a lot of private school educated students. I've definitely seen a lot of people graduate from University of Bristol and end up in law. A lot of the people in investment banking as well. One thing which I would say about University of Bristol graduates is the very, very good networkers always seem to get on people's good sides. Now, I don't know if that's something they had before they attended uni or they developed at uni, but it's something which obviously makes them stand out at the interview stage. University of Manchester, this uni, I think people rate it as this is a very good uni and yeah, it's definitely a top 10 uni in the UK university rankings, but they don't rate it highly enough. And if I had to guess why people don't rate University of Manchester highly is probably because the amount of offers they give out. Now, Look, University of Manchester, it's a big uni. I think it's the biggest in the whole of the UK. And so they can afford to give out so many offers. So don't have that in your head that they're just giving out loads and loads of offers. It's probably a bad university. I know the business school for sure, it's pretty good. If I remember correctly, it's called Alliance Business School. Produces a lot of top MBAs. I've seen the MBAs who graduate from University of Manchester enter a lot of high paying jobs. We've got Surrey, Exeter, York, decent unis. Exeter, I've heard good stuff about the economics and politics department. Liverpool, this is a good uni, not always first on people's lists. I'm not sure why, maybe the location, the city, I don't know why, but definitely a good Russell Group uni. Now moving outside the top 20, we've got King's College London. Very surprising, it's not in the top 20. I rate it you know, highly for the same reasons that I rated UCL in terms of the varied amount of options out there for its degrees rather than just focusing on social sciences or STEM subjects. It's also got a really good reputation, both nationally and internationally. One of the things to be aware of is that some of the departments at King's College are very new. So for example, the School of Business and Management, it was only formally created in 2015. And this compared to UCL, which was offering economics way before that. So even though both UCL and King's offer a lot more choice, some of the departments are more established at UCL. You can see it's got very high graduate prospects. I wouldn't say King's College is one of those elite level universities, but when employers see that King's College on someone's CV, they know it's a very good uni, it's a very competitive uni. In fact, I don't think, if I remember correctly, there was any places at clearing for King's College this year at 2023. Glasgow 23rd, almost top 15 last year. That's surprising. Glasgow as a city. The show goes on! But I would say that a lot of the graduates have opportunities to work in investment banking who graduate from University of Glasgow. The reason for that is a lot of banks, so Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, 
they've got their back office and middle office functions in Glasgow and if you think about it there's going to be a lot less competition to work in Glasgow than say London and so it's a good place to start your investment banking career if you want to work in operations or technology. Nottingham and Cardiff both good unis both have great student lives actually probably what they're famous for some of their courses are solid options law school at Nottingham I know is a very good and respected course moving down the rankings well Queen Mary I expected Queen Mary to be in this position always underrated as a university I'm not going to say it's a top 15 uni but it should really be placed around the 20 to 35 ranking so yeah it's 35 right now but I don't think it's ever given the right respect in terms of it being a much higher rated ranking university. I know for a fact that a lot of the departments, law, English, politics, they're all taught by world leading professors and if I had to guess it's probably the location. Milan isn't going to be number one on anyone's list of where they'd like to stay for three years. I'm sure that puts off a lot of people from applying. One other thing is that Queen Mary gives out a lot of offers to their widening participation scheme and especially in the area that they're based in which is a heavily economically disadvantaged location and so a lot of the offers would be a lot lower than probably a lot of the other universities which are based above it and so entry standards is probably one of the things that pulls Queen Mary's down in the university rankings and I'm not surprised a lot of people from Queen Mary enter the world of investment banking and in roles such as trading. I have to say that usually the people who went to Queen Mary and end up working in investment banking have some kind of postgraduate qualification so that could either be your undergrad from Queen Mary and then a postgrad somewhere else or an undergrad from one university and your postgrad from Queen Mary. I'm not saying that's a must it's just something I've seen and if you follow finance YouTube channels then one of the OGs Afsal Hussain who worked at Goldman Sachs asset management division graduated from Queen Mary's as well. City University 40th I think this is an underrated university but 40th is probably a good ranking. One thing I'd probably say is something similar to Queen Mary so when a lot of medics they study at Queen Mary they don't necessarily say they're studying at Queen Mary they say they're studying at Barts and that's probably because the reputation of Barts as a school is probably a lot higher than Queen Mary as a reputation of its university status and it's the same at City University so a lot of the business school students usually emphasize that they're studying at Bayes Business School rather than saying they are studying at City University and there's nothing wrong with this it's a dog eat dog world out there and use any advantage you can to help yourself stand out but again you know when it comes to the business school very very good has a lot of very specialized degrees which you don't get anywhere else and a lot of employees like this. Oxford Brooks University I don't have much to say about this but this is definitely a uni to watch for the coming years it's going to be breaking into the top 40 easily next year and it's done really well for itself considering how new of a university it is. SOAS University just inside the top 50. I think this is really a top 40 uni and it's probably got a bit of a rep in terms of it being a very activist university. I'd probably say that's true. A lot of the people that go and study at SOAS University are very, very passionate about the course that they're studying and there's nothing wrong with that in fact that really makes for a really good graduate experience. One thing I know about the courses at SOAS University is that they focus a lot on non-standard viewpoints so not everything is studied from a typical western point of view you often have a lot of experiences and viewpoints where you study ideas from a lot of third world countries rather than just focusing on philosophers and mainstream topics and so again you know that's one of the great things about SOAS University that they give you such a holistic experience about the topic that you're going to be studying at. A point to consider though for SOAS University is apart from probably I guess maybe the economic students a lot of them aren't going to be vying for those very high corporate paying jobs they'd rather be focusing and making changes in the world by working in places such as think tanks, NGOs and so as a result you're not going to be seeing SOAS at the top of any starting salaries because those kind of places don't really offer very very high starting salaries. Now looking at the ones below that I don't think there's any universities to call out but I would say one thing about the universities at the bottom is that they do a lot of work for widening participation and that's probably one of the reasons why they have such lot lower entry requirements. A lot of the people that attend the unis in this section of the rankings are usually people that are going to university for the first time. A lot of them went to a lot of underachieving schools, disadvantaged backgrounds and so these universities will offer you a lot of options which you probably can't get anywhere else and so if you feel like you want to go to university and you don't have that support system maybe from your school or maybe from your family you know, these are universities which are definitely going to be giving you a lot of options that you might not get anywhere else. 
So that's my opinion of the UK university rankings. If you disagree with any of my opinions, put them in the comment section below. I'll be having a look at them and then I'll see you all in the next video.